Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Uh, so today there is no bell ringer. I wanted to make that clear. I just want to go over this discussion with you real quick and uh, make sure everybody's prepared for this project presentation for government. All right, obviously the dictator's project that's going to be due Monday. Okay, presentations are going to start Monday. I want to give you all day to work on this, really. Uh, it shouldn't take you too long. You can work with partners if you want. That'd be great. If you want to do that, just please, please, please put your partner name down and then dictator you want to obviously research. So real quick, I want to go over this right now with you. So I'm in student view right now. So what you should be able to see, you're going to go to discussions. Okay. And then you are going to see dictator project presentation and click on that right now. And this is just where you're going to reply to submit whatever dictator you want to research. Okay. So right now, Candon, Joseph Stalin. So no one can choose Joseph Stalin. That's already taken, already done with. So again, that's really just how you can use that to help you, obviously, with your dictator presentation. So again, if you're working with someone, put their name down, and then obviously that person, uh, the, the dictator you want to research. So you go to assignments. Here's a dictator presentation, project presentation. Let's go to this right here. Okay. Bring up this instructions quick. All right, here's the list of dictators that you can research. I'm going to copy this. I know we went over this the other day. I'm going to paste this up here. See what dictators we can research. Want to do past ones? That's fine too. Like Cannon chose Joseph Stalin. That's great. Um, so here's a map, great map showing dictators in the world today, dictatorships, uh, countries that they represent. He even tells you the name, right? There's Putin, Xi Peng, even though they might have a different type of government, for the most part, they're a dictatorship. Here are the individuals. You click on them, it gives a little bit of information about them as well. Right? I know I went over some past dictators, so you guys can obviously go through that too, if you would really like. The show is not free, free countries around the world. There you go, there you have it. All right, so that should help you get a start on which dictator you like to research. Again, just please, um, obviously put in discussions whoever you're working with whoever you're going to be a partner with and then obviously right here uh, which dictator you would like to research okay real quick i just want to talk about 9 11 today i think it's important that we talk about 9 11 and discuss the importance of that event and how this impacted americans all around you know obviously the country and the world right even impacting people in other countries and uh what really helped us for so so long were the oceans, right? How the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean protected us from many different types of, um, many different types of attacks. Again, the, the, other, the only attack I could think of is Pearl Harbor, 1941. Hawaii was a territory at that time. So many people can't really connect to that as a whole in understanding um, exactly the impact and understanding of, you know what, we are vulnerable. We can be attacked at any moment, at any time. And with 9-11, it wasn't a said country. It was a terrorist group, terrorist organization. So we always need to make sure that we can remember that event, even though many of you weren't even born at that time. I was. It's called flashbulb memory. I, I remember exactly where I was, what I was doing, what I was wearing, and where I was at. So um, with 9-11, I think it's important that we talk about it every year when it's brought up. And even in current events, I know I talked about this the other day. And how Afghanistan is a key topic in, in, in the, the world today and you know, the events going on and how we evacuated Afghanistan after 20 long years there. And uh, with these terrorist organizations, they reclaimed Afghanistan, okay, like ISIS, Taliban, uh, Al-Qaeda, okay, and uh, how these groups we try to prevent from forming. That's why we were there in the first place. Right after 9-11, we wanted to make sure that we could protect ourselves and the rest of the world from these attacks from happening. And the way to do that is try to eliminate these terrorist organizations and these locations. And that's kind of where we track them to. All right, so again, that's something we can relate to with 9-11 and how that's impactful. Obviously, 3,000 individuals died at, uh, on 9-11, okay? You know, the Twin Towers were affected, crashed into biplanes. The Pentagon 
and a plane went down Western Pennsylvania, which was a huge memorial there for those people in tribute for those people. And it was a scary time, like I mentioned. We never seen an attack on American soil. Uh, those who did, obviously Pearl Harbor, but that was way out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Okay, we got involved in World War II. Okay, we attacked the Japanese and obviously going against the Germans in Europe. So with that being said, where do we go with these terrorist organizations? And uh, the Middle East is obviously where we went to try to make sure that we can protect ourselves and the rest of the world from these terrorist organizations from forming. But a flashbulb memory of mine, um, something that I remember is uh, obviously with, um, I, was in, I was in first grade, I was in elementary school. I remember the event happening. I remember where I was, I was uh, at school remember my teachers crying in the hallway. It's not like we had phones or televisions in each classroom um, to really see what was going on. And, and uh, it took a little bit of delay, obviously. And uh, teachers came up to the door, they're crying. And I had no clue what was going on. At a very young age, I really couldn't put these concepts and these understandings together. And after school, I remember going to the secretary's office where there was a television and watching the two planes on replay hit the Twin Towers. And being very scared. I had no clue what was going on. I just know the teachers that I looked up to that I uh, obviously admired were all crying and I didn't know what to do. And uh, once the bus is left, because I walked home, because uh, I live very close to the elementary school. Once I walked home, I went home and uh, my mom had a hair salon in a part of the house. And I remember some of those people getting a haircut crying about the situation. And my mom telling me just go in, watch some TV, you know, and she didn't want me to see what was going on. And, you know, obviously the people crying and every channel I went to, 9-11 was on. Every channel I went to, you saw the planes hitting and impacting either the Pentagon, the Twin Towers, and eventually the plane that crashed in the open field. And uh, with safety protocols, I know it's a pain every time you try to travel and try to fly, but it's needed, right? We need to protect ourselves and uh, make sure that we can try to prevent attacks like this from ever happening again. But with 9-11, it just shows how vulnerable we really are and how we can, an attack like that could happen at any moment. And we need to be prepared for it. One key thing I want to take away is with politics and how hostile it is between the two pol uh, political parties, right? That obviously never really ends, but an event like 9-11, everybody came together. And everybody put away their differences and realized we're Americans and we need to fight back. We need to try to come together and, you know, obviously uh, disband and dismantle some of these terrorist organizations around the world that cause these effects, these damages to the United States. And in a time of need, in a time of uh, turmoil like 9 11, I was, you know, obviously it was very unfortunate, but seeing the country come together was something that goes to show that uh, the United States, we are really the only superpower in the world. And that's, there's a reason for that. When we come together, when we unite, there's really no obstacle that we can't get over. And the heroism from these events, you hear about stories all the time of 9-11 and uh, some individuals that were very impactful during that day and how they saved many, many lives. Um, that's something we should never forget. So, with that being said, I want you guys to check out the video that I have posted on the page today. It's about a red bandana, the man with the red bandana. And this was an individual who went to Boston College. He played lacrosse and uh, he saved many, many people out of the World Trade Center, out of the Twin Towers. And uh, I think his story should be heard. I think his hero, his heroism is something that we should never forget, which we always talk about. And uh, again, there's many different stories about this, many different things that we should obviously remember. But with that being said, I think that's something that we shouldn't forget. So please check out that video. Every year, Boston College, uh, they pay tribute to, his name's Wells, and uh, they have a red bandana game because that's where he, what he wore. And many people remembered him. So I'll go the man with the red bandana. He saved the day. And I think it's very inspirational, very motivational. So please check that out. Um, I like to talk about it on Monday. I think it's important, again, that we talk about that. All right, guys. Hey, have a great weekend. Please, please post your, your, uh, your bell ringers to the attachment so I can grade those. And uh, take care. Have a great one. Remember, never forget 9-11.